appeared so pleasant and kind, who said, could I ask you something, if you wouldn't mind? I wish that about me a poem you'd compose, just merely find five lines would do, I suppose. If you would oblige me, I'd be grateful to you. How could I refuse her, though her acquaintance was new? <coughs> this one again, it's, it's just a carefree attitude that she had. Um, you know, she was a woman who didn't had a strong view, which she also didn't mind to be wrong. So it's called fair enough. <laughs> 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 so, dear readers, pay attention until I tell to you. I've learned of something lately, and this is really true. I was reading in the comment, but keep this up your cuff. Till I explain what it, is, what it implies, is that fair enough? Up in the town of Ballina, in the county of Mayo, there's a group of people, of them you surely know. They've embarked on a festival, and in without a huff. Someone seeking lines of poetry you need the heading fair enough. I don't I thought I'd like to enter, my efforts may be weak. Sure there's nothing wrong in trying, no honour do I seek. But if I could write like Wordsworth, that would be brilliant stuff. I'd be acclaimed a winner from my part in fair enough. <laughs> well this is my contribution with fair enough its theme. To many who may read it, simple it may seem. Others may be thinking in a way, it's bluff. But right or wrong, well, there it is, and that is fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, uh, my mother would be, I suppose, well connected with the youth and would um, really praise and encourage the youth. And this one just goes the, Our youth, I thought I'd write to all Moors and a little poem sent in, but I'm wondering what I'd write about as I took up my pen. I would not write about the pill or sex, it would be rash, for all literature concerning them I deem it only trash. But I hail the youth of Ireland, be their fashions long or short, do not abolish them on that score, please adults, I exhort. They may falter, they may stumble, as they tread life's erring path, but remember each in turn his own signal talent hath. And what's included as well is actually there's a postcard included here from somebody who's sitting in the room, uh, Theresa McGuire. Theresa McGuire was the teacher, uh, still is the teacher out in Drummond School, and she actually got my mother, when she was still in her 80s, to go to the school and teach the kids knitting, teach them Irish, and probably telling them all those stories that are, that are captured here. Uh, and I did this very nice card from Theresa, who was on holidays, I think in London this came from. Yes, there's a picture of the Queen's head in this. <laughs> so it's, it simply just says, Hello, Maureen, it was great to see you at school on Friday last. And looking so well. I will, underlined, call to see you soon. Take care. Love, Teresa. And she was true to her word. Teresa regularly called uh, to her. Uh, she also poked fun at the priest. So this one I just want to read. Uh, the very... So it's about Father John. So, uh, Father John is here as well. So, it's Father John Kenny. Priests have come to Westport. Some would like to stay. But their mission in life doesn't dictate that way. It is the practice that they gradually move on. The latest of these is Father John. And in the last verse, she writes, And now that he is leaving, we must stay at least. Thank you for those years. You have been our priest. I'll venture one comment, and a brief one at that. You may, in the future, wear a velvet red hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... Christmas uh, wish. This is probably timely, and there's just one or two more to go on it. A Christmas wish. So some claim it's Christmas every day, and in some respects that's fine. There's gatted cake, Madeira cake, sherry and port wine. Yet the seeds have changed immensely since I knew wrong from right, when Santa meant the world to me and his toys on Christmas night. The shortest days of winter, then to me seemed very long, as school in Carrie Kennedy had hurriedly along. I whispered to my mammy, will Santa come, he might to good obedient children on his way on Christmas night. 
So tell me now, my little one, what would you like to get? A storybook, a sleeping doll, or a wee cosmetic set. But don't forget you owe to the one who brought the light, the tiny babe in Bethlehem on the first cold Christmas night. And with the approach of Christmas and the falling of the snow, we decorate our cottage with the berries in a row. We'd have candles by the window and the turf fire burning bright. For me it was the, cl the climax, at last it was Christmas night. When festivities were over, I'd quickly steal to bed. I'd try so hard to fall asleep as I'd cover up my head. And long before the break of dawn, I'd been waiting for the light. All the suspense of waiting upon a Christmas night. And when I'd observe a lovely doll on a chest beside the wall, I'd fondle it with love and pride, and my parents I would call. They'd clap their hands and merrily, they would share my keen delight, saying hurrah for dear old Santa Claus and the joys of Christmas night. Many summers have gone by since I was young and free. Our span of life seems very short compared to eternity. But may I hear the angels play their trumpets gleaming bright in heaven above the azure sky where it's always Christmas night. Uh, she was written poems well about you know, Liam Hastings uh, who played on the Mayo team in the 1950s. And the, actually there's a good twist in this one. So it's called The Trance. And this would have been probably one she had written maybe two or three years before she died. The trance. I put, up, I put on the fire and I switched on the light. I picked up my knitting for a pastime that night. In the shades of the evening, calmly did creep. Somehow or other didn't I fall asleep. It may not have been sleep, just a mere trance, in which an angel from heaven I saw at a glance. He said, I've come on an errand, please don't get upset, but you'll probably tell me you're not ready yet. The sweat from my forehead and drops down did fall, in no way in the world did I wish to go. My lips and my tongue did feel so dry, although he'd not leave without me, however I try. As we passed by the hall stand, my car keys I caught. You know, the keys now that matter, St. Peter has got. With that exclamation, I could clearly tell to my earthly possessions, I could bid farewell. As he linked me along, it sure felt so nice. I knew then we were heading for paradise. When lo, someone pressed on the bell at the door, and the sock I'd been knitting lay there on the floor. <laughs> and so the very last one uh, is called My Wish. It's my Wish. O oh Mary, my mother, and my hope, shield me neath your azure cloak. Look down on me, your meek and mild. I'm your wayward, wandering child. The path of life leads to one end. Guard me, mother, round each bend. If by the wayside I should fall, won't you hearken when I call? And when the dark clouds my pathway mars, will you keep vigil with the distant stars? Then with arms outstretched with vivid rays, you lead me along the steep highways. For my faults and failings I must atone, I'll be gone to judgment on my own. With that messenger comes to me, for all my earthly chores I'll be set free. I'll need no passport, no form signed, all my baggage will be left behind. Now will it matter what I possessed when the cold cold clay on my coffin is pressed? Then grant dear God to poor souls like me that we'll be with you in that eternity to share the joy of heaven above and to greet again those whom we loved. Okay, so that's uh, the sort of the collection. I thank you for your for your attendance and for your patience uh, and for listening to me. It was a privilege.